Hi, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about five luxury items that I think are not worth purchasing and are not worth the money. Some of these items I really would like to own myself. I think they're beautiful, but I don't think that they're worth what the price is. And one of these items I'm gonna share with you is something I have been very guilty of doing myself and I am going to try to not do that again. But these are just my opinions and you are absolutely free to disagree with me and say that all of these are completely worth it. But I feel like it's a lot of money for what you're getting and I'll get into that. Most of these items I really like. There are a few that I find completely ridiculous. Um, but I will tell you about those. So my name is Melinda. If you're new to my channel, if you're returning, welcome back. I do videos usually on luxury reviews about once a week. And if you like those kind of things and you haven't done so already, I would love it if you take that time to hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell. So let's get right into it with the first item. The first item, and I have a little list here so that I don't just ramble on aimlessly. The first item is designer rolling luggage. And the example that I'm going to put on the screen for you is the Louis Vuitton Horizon 50, which is, I believe, if I did my research, that is their smallest, their carry-on size. Um, I would never get anything bigger than a carry-on in something designer because if you've ever seen how they check the bags underneath the plane, they are not very cautious with them. However, when you get a carry-on size bag, you are not guaranteed that that is going to get on the plane with you and make it overhead into the overhead bin. I have had that experience in the past where I had a very small, adorable little leopard print carry-on bag and I was flying an airline I don't normally fly and um, I think I was in boarding group two out of five and they took my bag at the gate and it came back with um, a lot of marks on it. I was not happy about that. So for me, the only way that I could do that would be to just use that bag on road trips and I fly so much, it just doesn't make sense. I have been traveling my entire life. I got a statement from my <laughs> the airline how many flights I took last year. It was a lot. I travel monthly, sometimes a couple of times a month. I have gone through a lot of luggage the wheels break, the handles break, they break, they just do. And if you have to check them, they just, they don't care about them at all. They're just gonna throw your things and just go as quickly as they can. My exception for the Louis Vuitton luggage, my husband and I do both have keep balls. These are in the size 45. I have been on many, many different airlines with this and it has always fit under the seat if there's not overhead bin space. However, I do make sure that I have a small handbag or something that fits in this if I am going to go on with this one because I don't want the risk of this being checked. So I have a great alternative to share with you. I got one for myself about two years ago and I got my husband one for Christmas and he absolutely loves this. And this is carry-on size. This is from Mark and Graham and you pay a little bit extra to do the initials. I have taken this on so, so many trips. It has never been checked. It has always made it in the overhead bin. And I just wanna show you why I wouldn't get expensive luggage. Can you see all the marks on this? I don't know if it's showing up, but there's marks all over that. There's scratches, there's marks. Then at the very top here, see where there's a sticker? So if you get to the hotel and their room, your room is not ready for you, they'll store your bags and they will usually put some sort of a sticker on it. So there's a lot of wear on the outside of this bag. Of course I did pick white and there's some dirt there. I got his in a black and a dark brown, but there's just, there's stuff all over this thing. And this bag, retails for $199 and they frequently have sales and I got mine on sale and I also got his on sale. It has the four wheels. This strap is super, super comfy. It's very, very padded and I mean, it's just super cute. And if it gets in the rain, you're not going to worry about it. The one that I saw online, I don't believe it comes in Damia Ben. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I will link it below if I have a chance to look it up. But these four corners, our Vaquetta on the other one. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten out of the car and had to walk, you know, across the street at the airport and it's pouring rain. 
so I wouldn't want to worry about Vaquetta bags either. And that bag, in case I did not already say it, it is $2,800 plus tax, where the one I just showed you is $199 plus tax, but you can usually get a 15 to 20% coupon on that and free shipping as well. I just think it's a better buy. I have been through so, so, so much luggage. I know it's gonna break. I know it is. I know this one's gonna break. I know every piece I have is eventually going to break. The wheel's gonna fly off in the middle of the terminal. Something's going to happen to it if you actually travel. And a lot of people I've seen with this bag don't really travel. So if I had a private plane, I might have a, a you know a whole set, but I don't. I fly like everybody else does and I'm just not willing to have that thrown around or be put under the plane. And you know, when you put it up your own self, it's not like I'm not being careful. This is my bag and I'm the only one that's touched it putting it in the overhead bin and you saw all the wear on that. So the second one is designer luxury home goods. And the first example I'm gonna share if you watched my, um, my video of, I forget what it was, my uh, wish list video. I don't remember if I had this on the wish list part or the I will not buy part because I'm so torn on it, but I know I'm not gonna buy it. I love it though, but I know it's not, it's not gonna ever come home with me. And that is the Dior blanket throw. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I love this piece so much. It comes in at $1,950 plus tax. I live under blankets all year long. It's in the summertime when I sit down at the evening to watch TV or to read a book. My, I'm usually wearing shorts and my legs get a little chilly, so I'll put the blanket on them. In the winter, I'm just bundled up. Sometimes my little Lola, if you don't follow me, I have a little 13 year old Boston Terrier named Lola. And sometimes she likes to cuddle with me on the couch. So I need a washable blanket. And the majority of these, not just your, there's beautiful ones from Hermes, from Louis Vuitton, all sorts of price points. They're gorgeous, but to me, they're just not practical. So I have an alternative here, and that is the Barefoot Dreams um, throw. I have three of these I got this one and another one exactly like this during their anniversary sale. They always have them during their anniversary sales. And then I picked up the same print, but in a dark black and charcoal for a different sofa when they had their sale in December. It's machine washable. I don't worry about if Lola's on it. I don't have to dry clean it. And it was, I wanna say it was under $200. I will find it and link it down below if they still have any, but it was nowhere near $1,950, which, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I really, really want that. I'm, I'm not gonna buy it, I'm not gonna buy it. Okay, so I told you I would tell you the one that I thought was absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. So, Louis Vuitton has a set of playing cards for $695. I don't understand that. <laughs> at all. That's a lot for a deck of cards, which you can get somewhere for $2. If you really, really need designer playing cards, I have some Bulgari ones here. They were actually a gift with purchase at Christmas. You can see they've never been opened. We don't play cards that often. But even if I was really into cards, um, I can't imagine spending that kind of money for playing cards. $695 for playing cards. That's ridiculous. Okay, the next one that I'm gonna have to say is absolutely ridiculous as well. Also from Louis Vuitton. And I think this one is really cool looking, but it's it's absurdity. It is a water bottle holder for $1,360. Um, you can buy a lot of water bottles for $1,360, or you can refill a glass container or whatever a lot. I mean, wow, that just like completely, completely blows me away. Another one that they have on their website that I don't understand is they have little notebooks and they are $295. I just got this last week. Look how cute this is. It was $3.50. It has Snoopy on it. It's so cute. <laughs> I just don't get it. I just think some of these things, just because you put a logo on it, doesn't make it a good buy. So that is designer home goods. And now I am going to move into designer coats. 
So the third item is luxury designer winter coats. The example I'm going to insert a picture of, insert a picture of is the Louis Vuitton hooded wrap coat. It's in the most beautiful camel color. It's a lovely coat. It comes in at $5,250 before tax. I think that a much better alternative and it is still a very, very classic brand is Burberry. Burberry is constantly running sales at the end of the season and they're also sold on a lot of websites besides Burberry and like Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, um, all sorts of places and you can find them on sale. They also have outlet stores and I'm not sure but I'm pretty sure that the outlets ship. You can call them and ask but I picked this one up at the outlets in um, Desert Desert Hills, Cabazon, California, and it is just a very classic wool cashmere trench coat. This one, I brought out the tags. I would be sure to tell you the exact name of it because they don't sell it anymore. This is just in the outlets now. The style is Dale's Moore, and it says the um, original price, and I don't know if this was the Burberry original price. No, the Burberry original price was $1,150. The outlet had it marked down to $795, and they had an extra discount that day, I paid $596 for this coat versus $5,250. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you want to see this coat on me, I will link um, the video where I do try it on down below. And I have seen a few of these on some pre-love sites, and there's also some very, very similar versions. But it's super, super classic. It's never going to go out of style, and you're saving a lot of money. Something also to consider with buying a really heavy winter coat, especially if you're looking to pay Louis Vuitton, Dior, you know, really, really high-end prices, is the weather where you live. So I live in Nashville, the Nashville, Tennessee area, and we do get winter here. Not the last two years, not really. I mean, a little bit, but I can count on one hand how many times I've worn a coat here. So if you're in somewhere like Florida or Texas or Southern California, you may not get a lot of wear out of one of these coats. So that's something also to consider because it is, they are heavy. These are heavy duty, you need to be really cold to wear this thing. <laughs> They're very heavy duty. But I just think there's a lot better alternatives, even though those are absolutely beautiful. I think they're I think they're gorgeous. But I also know if you're looking at cost per wear, I bought this in October and it is now February and it has not been on me once except for to try it on in the store and to try it on for a video. It just has not gotten cold enough here this year. I know in the long run, I will get my money's worth out of this because next winter may be very, very cold and I may wear this all the time. I don't know that I would get my money out of a $5,000 coat in the climate that I live in. So that is something that I consider as well. So let's get on to number four. So the fourth item is something I have said in a few or at least one other video. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, and that is designer luxury sweatshirts and t-shirts. I'm not talking designer ready to wear classic pieces like, you know, jackets and, you know, cashmere sweaters and things that are going to last and that you will, you know, have for a lifetime. I'm talking very logoed designs that are extremely expensive. And the ones that I showed last year, we're also from Gucci. I'm going to show you Gucci this year. I loved the one last year. I think it was actually a French Bulldog that was on the shirt last year, but it looked a lot like my Lola. She looks a lot like a Frenchie and it was so cute. It was so cute. This year it is equally as cute. It has Mickey Mouse on the sweatshirt. The sweatshirt retails for $1,300 plus tax for a sweatshirt. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm interested. Tell me if you guys think, can you do that? Can you spend $1,300 on a sweatshirt? I mean, I would so much rather have, if I was going to get into that kind of area, I don't know, like a nice blouse or top or something more timeless than a casual sweatshirt. And the other one I'm going to insert a picture of is the Gucci logo t-shirt. We have seen this absolutely everywhere. Again, I think this is really, really cute. 
This one comes in at $590, and I especially have a problem with the white. Have you ever owned a white t-shirt that's looked good more than a few seasons? You know what happens to them. If you wear antiperspirant or deodorant, they get yellow stains. And that's disgusting looking, and you have to throw them out. I have always bought very inexpensive white t-shirts for layering and you know, whatever, if I'm getting white, I don't spend a lot of money on it because I know it's gonna discolor. And also, if you drip something on it, it's gonna stain very, very easily. It's just, I can't, I just can't. $590 for a t-shirt, $1,300 for a sweatshirt. I don't care how cute they are. There's just so many other quality, good pieces that you could buy with that kind of money. I just can't do it. And number five, this is one that I am extremely guilty of. I am doing better. It is my New Year's resolution not to do this anymore. <laughs> but I, if you follow me, I am a small leather good junkie. Junkie. Every single season, all of these beautiful fashion houses come out with beautiful colors. And they're tempting because they're a much lower price point than a bag. And I may not want to buy a bag in this particular color, but it looks so great inside of my bag. What I really recommend with small leather goods is just getting the necessities that work for you, whatever those may be. And I'm gonna show you some of the ones that work for me, just a few examples. I did a big small leather good purge, I think last spring. I keep thinking I need to do it again, but there's nothing I want to get rid of. But I also know I need to stop buying them because I'm getting to a point where I'm not enjoying switching as much. I used to use one wallet for, you know, until it fell apart. And I, I still like switching my wallets because I have different size bags and I like seeing the color, but I have plenty, so I need to stop. But I just think of all the money I've spent and I'm like, that's a couple of handbags, really it is. So for me, the absolute basics that I need to have are a key pouch, and I'm showing you one that I have from Louis Vuitton. And the reason for me that I think a key pouch is really important is because I have a lot of leather lined bags and I have sharp keys inside of here and it keeps them from scratching my bag. And I also would put this down in here as well so that it doesn't scratch my bag. So that for me is super important. Cosmetic pouches I think are very, very important and I think it saves your bag from if anything leaks. I always see people when they're showing me what's in their bag pulling out ink pens. I just cringe inside. If you ever had an ink pen leak and um, I'll have one leak at some point. So I always keep them down in some sort of a, a pouch. But this is the Louis Vuitton Toiletry 19. And this one would be suitable for the majority of my bags. So I have a lot more than this. I'm going to be very honest. I'm just showing the very bare that, you know, that I could have bought and the money I could have saved. So for mini bags, I have a lot of mini bags. Um, another little cosmetic pouch. I have two of these. I brought them both out to show you. Do I need two of these? No, I really don't. This one I tend to use a lot more because it has that wipeable lining and you can see I have items in there. I kind of leave this full of things when I want to use a mini bag and we'll just switch it. This one has a fabric interior, so I don't. I have a coin purse. I very, very rarely carry coins in any bag. It's uh, other than my pink Zoe wallet, I'm not really worried about the coins making anything dirty, but I just very rarely have them, but it's nice to have and it's such a pretty color. But again, I have too many coin purses. And then a wallet. I'm into compact wallets right now, and I am not gonna bore you with my Zoe wallet because I've showed you that 9,995 times. <laughs> so I just brought out a Chanel and a Gucci. And honestly, for me, having a red, or I mean, a pop of color and a black would suffice. I don't need all these things that I have. Not that I think I'm getting rid of them, but. And the last thing, again, for mini bags would be a card holder. And I have a lot of these too, so. You can really save money by not purchasing a lot of small leather goods. And I was also going to show you very quickly, if you didn't want to go with um, luxury designer small leather goods, I think Long Shops, uh, the Le Foulon line is just absolutely amazing. I have a cosmetic pouch here. I have a little mini wallet here. 
told you I had a lot of small leather goods. I don't need any more. But these are extremely reasonably priced and it saves you a more money card holder. I just brought out the exact same things that I was showing you and a coin purse and a key clay key holder. So I just brought out the same things that I was showing you. Also, I got this one um, Christmas time from Coach and it was on sale for like $25. This is a great coin purse and it has a little slit in the back for credit cards. So you don't have to spend this kind of money like the Hermes Bastia. You can find things on sale. But yeah, I feel like I kind of went overboard with the small leather goods. The colors suck me in. So I did pretty good with it last year. Hopefully this year it'll be a no, done. <laughs> not doing it but let me know down below do you agree with these items do you disagree with these items or what are some things that you think are an absolute waste to spend money on a luxury item when you could buy a non-luxury item that you think works just as well or would fill the purpose just as well but I hope you have an amazing day today hope to talk to you again very soon take care bye bye